Hello, this is uh, Michael Emery with TVOI News, and we're standing here with John Bujak, uh, the candidate for governor, and he had met all the criteria that, that was needed, and uh, we're here to interview him and see what his take is and what happened. So, John, what, do you, what, what really happened and why couldn't you get on the debate? Sure. Well, Michael, you know, I was, a, I was given an invitation by KTVB back in May. Uh, to participate in the gubernatorial debate right. and they told me at the time that what I would have to do is be able to prove that I'd received ten thousand dollars in contributions from third parties and uh, the debate date got closer and closer I filed my sunshine report with the Secretary of State and uh, last week I contacted them and asked them to please verify that I've been uh, I, I would be included in the debate I didn't hear from them uh, back until noon on Monday and at that time, they advised me that I had not qualified and asked me to provide some additional information. Noon on Monday? No. Well, Monday was a holiday. Well, indeed. And the problem was they wanted proof from a bank that the money had been deposited, <laughs> and it was Columbus Day. And so I couldn't give them the proof until the following day. Well, I think, I think everybody will agree that Monday is, we were trying to get to the bank, was impossible. I tried. I had to make a deposit. So where did that leave you? Well, it left me uh, going to the bank on Tuesday, not me personally, my treasurer up in Coeur d'Alene, and he had uh, deposited the funds, um, and I'd sent them a copy of my uh, updated Sunshine report that included uh, money I'd received since September 30th, because that was the cutoff date for the first Sunshine report that had been filed with the Secretary of State's office, and clearly I had received in third-party contributions more than $10,000. But today, um, they contacted me first thing in the morning and said, please provide the deposit slip from the bank and you're good. So we sent them the deposit slip and then that wasn't good enough. They also wanted copies of checks and the deposit slip and the deposit receipt. So we sent all that and that wasn't good enough. Then they wanted a, a printout of the screen that showed who owned the account and what the balance and the account available funds were. And they said, as soon as you provide that, we'll let you into the debate. So I sent that over. And then uh, the station asked me to call them. And they said they had some questions they wanted to ask the Secretary of State, and they'd get back to me. And so I waited for two hours, hadn't heard back. So I called the Secretary of State's office, and they told me no one from KTVB had called them. Oh, isn't that interesting? And then uh, a little bit after that, after I called them on having not contacted the Secretary of State, a representative of KTVB did finally call me and say, we're not going to let you into the debate. I asked them why. They just simply stated over and over, you haven't met the criteria. When I said, what part of the criteria didn't we meet? Did I not have $10,000? Was it not third party? What was the problem? They just repeated over and over, you haven't met the criteria, and you're not going to be in the debate. And that's where we stand. And so I, I have the proof. I've provided the proof. Um, they say I'm not qualified to be in this debate, and I think they're wrong. And my, my theory is there's somebody who's debating tonight that really doesn't want me standing next to him at the podium because they don't want my message, which is the only conservative message uh, this election cycle, to get out to the people. I wonder who that could be. We'll not mention names. <laughs> I personally had called uh, Channel 7, and at first they were really nice. They, they said, we'll get right back to you, and they will, we'll call you. And I kind of reiterated some of the things that you had mentioned that you had followed all of the uh, everything that they wanted you to follow, but that they had late, waited till the last minute, which I found a little odd. So I asked them the question, point blank, why was it you waited so long to make sure that the the criteria was met when you, he had followed all the rules per statement to them? And so they never responded back. And I think that it's come time where people will have to just admit that uh, they have an agenda. And that's why we created TVOI News. We're not getting the truth. We're not getting the answers. We're getting these games. And we just want to have a, an even, level, fair uh, election. It makes us even wonder if our votes even count when they are the ones counting them. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's gotten to the point where we have to finally just stand up as citizens and do something about it and speak truth to power. One of the things I'd like to do is thank you so much, John, for doing that. And you know, who, what kind of fool do they think you are? Because you're very thorough. You're one of the best lawyers I've ever heard of. And uh, you were a prosecuting attorney, isn't that right? Well, it's true. And, and again, they, they do have an agenda. This isn't the first time they've excluded legitimate candidates uh, from the debate at, debate at uh, KTVB, and I'm sure it won't be the last. And you're exactly right. If people want to hear the truth, they're going to have to search for it. They're going to have to go to stations like yours to learn about it. 
And I'm hoping the voters are paying attention and that they get informed and they still come out and make the right choice in November. Well, we started TVOI out of an act of desperation. Uh, people want solutions, so let's provide some solutions. Let's be men and women within the community, help bring our community back together and work together for the common goal for our, ourselves and our children's future. And I, I see that you've been attacked. You, they, they've, they've done very nefarious things that anybody can see was, was just incorrigible. So um, on a last note, what would you like to say to the uh, people of the lovely state of Idaho? You know, the most important thing is get informed, learn the truth, tune into the one debate that's left where I'll get to debate against Governor Otter, and that's the Idaho Public Television debate on the 30th of, of this month, and that will be broadcast statewide. But most importantly, be vigilant. If we're going to be free, if we're going to preserve our constitutional and conservative traditions here in Idaho, we're going to need to be vigilant and stand up and be counted when uh, that's what's called for, like tonight. And I appreciate you being here to get the truth and the real story out to the voters. Well, I appreciate it very much, John. And Thank on a much. last note, I'm going to vote for you. And I don't care what anybody says. What about Mr. Pinky's Oh, oh, well. Uh, an, ask, just ask John. He'll well, hold on a second. We've got a little bit more to tell. What was the deal about uh, coming back to TVOI? What was the deal about, what was his name? I have never heard of him. Mr. Yeah. Pankey. Steve Pankey uh. is the constitutional uh, candidate for governor. Okay. And I, I asked KTVB to explain why he was included in the debate when I wasn't. And they explained that he had run for lieutenant governor before and he had received 10% of the vote, which was one of their qualifying criteria. So it wasn't based on money that he was included. It was based on the fact that he had received 10% of the vote in a comparable election previously. Really? Well, I got your emails back and forth from, uh, um, what was her name? With uh, Morris, Kate Morris, and yes. Kate Morris was was gracious enough to respond to you, but it was very loose end. She didn't she didn't really answer your questions, and it was it seemed to me very biased. Like she, it's like she didn't really even care to even help you. Well, my take on Miss Morris is I, I don't think I could have possibly provided her with uh, proof or data that would have been satisfactory in her eyes. I, I, I totally agree with you. They already had made their decision and they were going to stick to it. And you know, we'd like to do on one last note, look at the fiasco that Butch Otter put out with the two gentlemen on the debate on the Republican debate. And we became the laughing stock of Idaho. I mean, na nationwide, they went around, everybody just laughed and joked at us. And, um, Otter forced that them into the debate. And I think it's only one of two things. Either he's totally incompetent or he had an agenda. Now, I know that may not be your view, but many people out there in Idaho, that's the way they feel. And the game has gotten so, so it's so obvious. But like I said, I really want to thank you for coming. Thank you, Michael. And uh, this is uh, TVOI News, and uh, we speak truth to power, and we're here for you.